So little known fact, if you kill a lot of levers, you have this daddy lever come out, or mommy, I can't really tell the difference. Bye! Thing looks nasty. Anyways, good evening guys, or good morning, good night, whatever time it is for you. Sorry, I didn't mean to assume your time zone, and I was 2018, I gotta be cautious of these kind of things nowadays. <laughs> nice to see you, welcome back to Zooter. My name's Attacking Toucans, and in the last episode, we finally got the Silver Gauntlets, which were in the place of Ruto's letter on the bottom of Lake Hylia, which we were finally able to get because we got the Silver Scale inside the Shadow Temple. And now today, we can do the adult half of the Spirit Temple. Wow, what an explanation. I'm so good at explaining things. Oh, look at this guy. Look at those, look at those snarled lips. He's like, eh. Can you see me down here? Now, ooh. I never realized how pretty of an eye Bemos had. Ooh, look at that, so sexy. <laughs> Am I really falling in love with the Bemos right now? Is that what I've come down to? Am I that desperate? Maybe. <laughs> Please don't make fun of me, guys. Desperation is not funny. Well, okay, it slightly is, I will admit. <laughs> Anyways, oh. A wolf was a puppy, oh. Okay, the puppy fell, that was the easiest fight of my life. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> so a couple episodes ago, I had a comment question that said, maybe we should replace Navi's dialogue in the randomizer with random jokes. That way, whenever Navi talks, it's not completely useless garbage. And we got some funny jokes. <laughs> At least slightly funny. I thought they were funny. Some of them are Zelda puns. Some of them are just random jokes I never heard before and thought they were funny, so <laughs> I used them. Here's probably the most common one I got. Hi, I'm Navi, and I'll be your navigator. <laughs> okay, no one laughed at that one. Okay, well, let's move on to the next one then. Navi, knock knock, Link, who's there? Not your parents. <laughs> okay, I think I'm going to hell for laughing at that one. <laughs> the next one is, Link, if Jack was stuck up on top of a horse, would you help Jack off the horse? <laughs> I would. Wait. Before I move this Song of Time block, let me get this gym. Because if you don't get the gym first, or the rupee, I don't know why he called it a gym. If you don't get that first, then you have to move the second Song of Time block a second time. And that can get rather obnoxious. Next one is Mirror Mirror on the Wall. Who's the fairiest of them all? <laughs> yes, quite. That was a good joke. Quality joke right there, my friend. And the gold sculptula, I think that gives us 60 tokens. I kind of wish that you could, like, raise the amount of tokens required, like, up to, like, 60, 70. I'm just kidding, I do not wish that. That would be obnoxious. And the new seed generator for Zooter, though, you're able to set the maximum amount of sculptulas needed to complete the ROM, so you can set it to, like, 10, 20. Oh, I almost fell for that, but I remembered that a sneaky boy would drop down on me. Oh, it looks like a little butthole on the ground. Another heart container. Wowza. We're at 18 hearts. I can't believe we have so many hearts right now. Um, somebody pointed out that hearts are kind of the best way to measure somebody's progress throughout the randomizer. Because they're probably the one thing that are most equally distributed throughout the game. So you can kind of tell how far somebody's gotten by the amount of hearts they got at a glance. So... That's, that's good, I guess. Okay, this takes us back into the main room. Oh, no. Another sneaky boy trying to drop down on me. And then a pot! Everything's coming alive, man! And then why do the torches look like they could be french fry baskets? Okay, let's steal some coinage. I don't think there's a gold sculpture on this wall, is there? No, can I hookshot onto it? Yes. Shortcuts. Next is, hey listen, so a baby seal walks into a club. <laughs> oh wait, I forgot there's one of these guys. Okay, he broke up into little pieces. I will take your guys' advice and I'm gonna use Din's fire to kill all the little babies because it's way easier. So next we have, so my friend Veronica asked me if I wanted to go out and I'm like, nah V. 
Get it? Because you can shorten Veronica's name into V. Okay, these are not, none of these are my jokes. <laughs> I just try to pick the best ones out of the comment section. <laughs> um, what do you call a ship carrying a bunch of magical winged people? A fairy fairy. <laughs> these are terrible. <laughs> but I like terrible jokes. I'm one of those people who just really loves quality terrible jokes. They just, they tickle my fancy. Like my name's Ziggy Azalea. Let's see, do we have any other good jokes to read? Oh yeah, I was floating around and all of a sudden a can of soda got thrown at me. But don't worry, it didn't hurt because it was a soft drink. <laughs> I don't think this sun gives us anything. Oh, it gives us a wall master. No, thank you. Worst present ever. They we're getting all this money, but we've had a full wallet for so long now, it doesn't even matter. Okay, here's our last joke. One windmill asked another windmill, what is your favorite genre of music? And the windmill said, I'm a metal fan. <laughs> Man, guys, you guys... You should all become stand-up comedians at this point. Those were some of the highest quality jokes I've read in my whole entire life. And no, I'm not just saying that to make you feel good. I truly mean that from the bottom of my heart. You can tell by the tone of voice that I am very sincere in what I'm saying. That dude down there, that Armos, is just freaking out. Oh, I also thought of one joke of my own <laughs> that we could throw in there. What is a green chain made out of? Chain links. <laughs> Okay, that was probably the worst one so far. Uh, is there a chest up here? I forget how I get I think I have to play Scarecrow's song. It's weird how Scarecrow's song is actually used quite a few times in this temple. I think the Spirit Temple is an alright temple. I don't think it's the best. I feel like it's really, really linear. And it, ooh, the boss key already. And on top of that, it has the, uh... The kind of feel of every single room has its own secluded puzzle. You figure out that puzzle, and then you move on to the next one. Pierre, why did you not come out to greet me? I miss you, buddy. Please? Wow, he's just ghosting us all of a sudden. I thought we had something special. I thought we were in love. But no. Maybe Scarecrows can't fall in love. Well, I guess we learned that in Wizard of Oz, because the Scarecrow didn't have a, it's a heart, right? Or is that the Iron Man? I don't know. I know Iron Man has Gwyneth Paltrow, but that's about it. Ooh, am I gonna fall? I'm like standing on the very edge of this ledge. Another key. Cool, cool. And what does this do? I actually completely forgot what this rustic switch does. <laughs> At least the Spirit Temple is making us use all of our items. So much variety. Oh, it opens up that door down there. I don't think there's anything down here that's worth getting. I'm pretty sure this just opens up a shortcut so we can get back up to this room quickly from the main room. But I'll go ahead and push this block just to be safe. Drip drip. Okay, so it just opens up a shortcut. All right, so that wasn't necessary, but I still like to like show off elements of this game because Apparently, there's a lot of people watching this Let's Play from the comments I've read that have never seen this game before. And I feel like that's really interesting, the fact that people are watching a full Let's Play of Zooter, which is a randomizer, without ever seeing the actual game before. I mean, to be fair, this game isn't very story-driven. It has, like, a basic story, but it's this game is mostly just a combination of fetch quests and temples like thrown together by saying, oh, you gotta save the land by getting the three stones, ooh. I'm just gonna burn this guy with my fire. Whoa. I didn't realize that Din's fire stuns the Beemos. That's cool. Wait, can I kill the Beemos with my hammer? Mm, yes, no, maybe so. Whoa. These mummy dudes are attacking me with some fireballs. Yum. So we have we have Gibdos, which are the walking mummies, and then we have whatever those guys are, and they're the floating mummies. <laughs> so many different types of mummies. At this point, 
this game could be a dance mom's game. That's so dramatic. Like, you, you throw a bomb at him, it decapitates him, and as his head is flying through the air, it explodes. And they allow children to play this game. And this is why we have so much violence nowadays, because of Zelda. No, just kidding. <laughs> uh, oh no, we want to go through this door over here first. I always thought this is a really weird- Okay, first off, let's take off the hover boots. I don't know why I keep leaving them on. Even though I think it's kind of fun to walk around with them on, it's kind of like you have, like, butter on the bottom of your shoes, and you're like, woo! But at the same time, it can be fairly obnoxious. I think there's an invisible chest right here. Or on this side. Right? Let me let of truth this. And we also have an iron knuckle coming up. Do we gotta equip anything special for that? I guess we could kill it with bomb shoes. Uh, there was one, I was just a little bit too far to the right. The compass! The comp ass. I don't know, would it be faster to just kill with a big Goron sword? Probably. All right, let's back out of the way. Hit me, hit me brother, so I can hit you back. We were so slow at first. Oh no, I said that. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> He's like, I'll show you who's slow. Damn, that killed him fast. This Iron Knuckles needs some Lon Lon milk. Look, we actually fought an Iron Knuckles and the room is still completely intact. He didn't destroy anything, that's surprising. Okay, so we have one chest out here, and this is normally... I forget what this is. Because that chest over there is normally the silver gauntlets. Oh, this is supposed to be the mirror shield. That's right. A purple rupee. I can't remember. I know there is one green rupee chest in this game. Have we have we had a green rupee inside a chest yet? Because if we haven't, that's still something for us to find. Because I definitely want to find the biggest troll. Wait, there's another chest in here? There is. I almost forgot this. Luckily, I, we got the compass recently, so... Another purple ruby, dang! We meet again, Mr. Purple. Okay, now we can go the other way. Right? I know there's, like, another door over there. I forget... I'm actually kind of getting turned around in this temple. I was, like, saying, oh, this temple's so linear earlier. And now here I am. Getting lost. I'm not actually lost, but... Or am I? Oh, there's just a chest in here. It's a random little chest. We're getting so many rupees that we can't use. You know, I'd actually be interested in them, and like the modding of this game, changing the adult wallet to hold more than 500 rupees, just so you could see how many rupees you end up collecting. I feel like that'd be a pretty harmless, but good addition. Okay, since we have a surplus of bomb shoes, we're just gonna <laughs> quickly kill everything. That we can just, you can literally come skip past this whole entire puzzle with the long shot. It's kind of comical that you can do this, but I'm okay with saving time. Oh! Almost <laughs> just walked through that evil Roomba, which somebody suggested that we name the spike traps Doombas. The Roombas of Doom. I'm all for it. I love it. I, I'm always for really crappy puns. I've already told you guys this this episode. But yeah, so last night I was uh, kind of playing with the new C generator for Zooter, um, which it isn't its own program yet. I had to use the programming tool Python in order to even open up the program because it doesn't have its own application yet, which was a lot easier than I expected, honestly. And it's kind of crazy because the original C generator right now has just one page of settings. But the newest one that's about to come out has legit five pages worth of settings, and they're still adding more. Something else they said they're adding is they're going to add shop sanity, which, add, which adds all the items you buy in shops into the randomizer. <laughs> There's just so much that they're able to do with this randomizer, and I'm, I'm living for it. Just so you guys know, I am going to be doing another Zooter playthrough. We'll do a Zooter 2. Probably going to be named... Probably replace like the Z with the two and call it Tutor. <laughs> Maybe not. That actually sounds really dumb. <laughs> but 
But just the, the appeal of Zooter is that every single playthrough is completely different. Damn! That's a huge rupee! So that literally means, like, regularly a Let's Play, you can only do the game once, and that's it, because, like, what else is, are you gonna show? But for this, I mean, you can play through multiple times. And also the appeal is, lots of the settings they added are ways for you to be able to play through the game faster. So you're able to cut some of the fat out of Zooter. Um, some of the things that are just time consuming. For example, you can, instead of having to save the four carpenters inside the Gerudo Fortress, you can switch it up and make it so the Gerudo training card is just mixed in with everything else. Put, this, put your freaking sword away. Oh, dang, I just pulled it out again. Why did I do that? <laughs> nope. So yeah, I think that saving the carpenters- <gasps> Oh my gosh! Guys, we finally got it! I can't believe we finally found the Kokiri sword. It was inside a random chest inside the spirit temple. Who would have guessed? I mean, it doesn't even matter at this point because we've already done, I think, everything we can possibly do as Kid Link. But at least we know- at least we finally got it. Such- such good news. I'm filled with so much glee. Blow up this wall. And let's turn. Oh, I guess we're able to do the fishing minigame as a kid. That's what the Kokiri sword allows us to do at this point. So it unlocks one thing. Not that we need to do that necessarily. Oh, more Lizzle foes. But yeah, anyways, back to other things you can cut out. You're able to cut out the second race with Dompe, so you don't have to race him two times because that can get rep repetitious. You can cut out the need to do the second archery mini game where you have to get 1500 points. So I know that's even hard for some people, like they're not able to do that. And what if they hide like a really ne necessary item behind that mini game? And there's just tons of little things like that. Like you can skip the memorization game inside the woods with the ocarina. You can skip the, uh, what's it called? The Hyrule Courtyard or the Castle Courtyard. We have to sneak past the guards. Pretty much anything that just is time consuming can be switched out. And I think the setting that I'm most excited for is they added the opportunity to add the ocarinas into the randomization. So instead of Saria just giving you the ocarina like we got in this let's play, that's now been added. Along with the weird egg, that egg that Malin gave us to wake up her dad, you can also add that to the randomization as well. So lots of these settings are able are enabling even more just opportunity to have things mixed up, adding more legitimate items into the mix. So a lot of great news for Zooter, and that's just like there's five new pages of options. I just kind of brushed over some of the things that I was able to think of, but there's just so many. You can really truly craft an experience that you think would be best. And then something else, like they just keep on adding more, but a lot of you guys might know about this, but recently they added... Here, I'll talk about this next episode, because this is some big news and I don't want to talk about it while fighting a boss. But there's other cool stuff. But I'll wait till next episode. Anyways, Twin Rova! Oh gosh. Whew. Okay, so we, this is actually my least favorite boss fight in the whole entire game. Just because it's really time consuming and repetitive and kind of just difficult in like an annoying way. Hit! What the heck? Why didn't you hit her? Okay, first off, I'm gonna go ahead and just switch to the Master Sword so we can more easily use our shield. I think it's actually easier if we stand on one of these side platforms so we have a better vantage point of the map. Who's going next? Hurry up! Are you gonna attack me from above? Oh gosh. Hopefully this works. What? Are you kidding me? <laughs> that was so rude. Of course she laughs like a bitch after that. Okay, hit her. Kotake, my laser beam, dang it. Oh my gosh, I'm being bodied right now. Oh, hit it. Why can't I? Don't fall off the platform! Thank you! Finally hit her! <laughs> oh. Hello. Please hit. Please! Why aren't you freaking- There we go! 
I don't know why I'm having so many issues with this. <laughs> Petition to be able to skip the twin Rova boss fight. I'd be all for that. So, so long. So time consuming. I just realized this room is really cool though. Like these walls. I wonder if any of these hieroglyphs have ever been deciphered. I'm sure. If they can, anyways. Or if they even say something to begin with. What? Why did it not? Ow. Wow, I don't know why I stayed on that platform. What? Gosh. Oh, don't fall. Mm. Hit her. Thank you. I've been doing this boss fight for like six minutes already. But at least we made it to the second half. The first half is the half that's really obnoxious. Double dynamite attack. Oh, look at those legs. Well, actually, I don't think her legs are thick. Thick. I think she just thickened her legs by adding a bunch of extra cloth to them. <laughs> Why do squats when you could just wear 10 layers of pants? Am I right? You want to have a big, beautiful looking butt? Well, my advice to you is just wear 20 pairs of underwear. Nobody will ever know the difference. The mirror shield looks so cool when it's flashing like that though. Like it looks when it turns white. Ugh. Then it like, it matches our tunic so well. Damn, people are like, thinking it's weird that Nintendo has been putting like, big butts and boobs in some of the mo most recent video games. And they're like, I thought Nintendo was a kid-friendly game company. Did they forget about Twin Rova? Like seriously, look at this girl. She's busty as hell, man. Okay, whew, I almost missed that. If you miss one of these strikes, it's a pain in the ass because you have to let it cycle through the rest of them, and then you have to wait until like the other element. Fortunately, we did not miss it. Wait, what? Why did it? What? She only did ice twice. Are you kidding me? And now the other fire. Oh wait, now she's back to ice. I guess I could have dodged the fire attack. That makes sense. I didn't have to deflect it with my shield, but I wasn't thinking. Anyways, let's blast her. Fish. Okay, at least the second half didn't take nearly as long. I kind of wish it didn't cut out this cutscene, because I think this cutscene is really funny. <laughs> Their banter back and forth is... What, did they not cut it out? Maybe they left it in. Okay, I think they did leave it in. Awesome. Maybe they thought the same thing as me. Oh, no, never mind. They just somehow quickened up the cutscene. Alright, so what's this heart container gonna give us? <laughs> a bundle of arrows. Hey, at least we have a good old, good old arrow refill now. And now, I believe we're going to get the water medallion. <laughs> if we don't, <laughs> I would be very concerned. I don't think it could give us anything else. And then we can also get our last song, which is the Minuet of Forest. Okay, there we go. Water medallion hose. That's what's up. Okay, so... Ooh! Okay, so normally after you get the water medallion, you go to Kakariko... What's it called? Kakariko City? Village. Kakariko Village. I don't know how I forgot the name. Normally you can go to Kakariko Village and it activates the cutscene where it's burning down and that's where you learn the Nocturne of Shadow. But we already know the Nocturne of Shadow, so instead of entering the village from the front, which is what the game expects you to do, and that's how the cutscene normally works, we're gonna enter from the back. I wonder if the game has programmed a cutscene for that. We're about to find out. Wait, what? It's not on fire. What, do we have to leave through the front and come back in to activate the cutscene? All right, let's leave the village and then we're gonna re-enter. And then quickest arsonist ever, yep. That was, in fact, the quickest act of arson anyone has ever witnessed in their lifetimes. Cool, well, and I believe with that, we are going to end the episode here so, the next episode is indeed going to be the finale of the Let's Play. But, 
I will be doing the big post side quest, and we'll also do the child fishing mini game, just to see what items we get, because we've gotten almost every single thing in the game. Might as well finish it up, just go for 100% at this point. And then we will go and finish up Ganon's castle, which shouldn't take too long, because you don't have to do all the trials. We have Ganondorf's trials turned off, so we'll just have to find the boss key, I believe which is randomized into the dungeon. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching this episode. If you enjoyed it, give it a good old hefty thumbs up, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Love you all, and I hope you have a wonderful day, or night, or... Dang it! I'm assuming time zones again! Oh, yes, they must avow your boy. Whoa. Best believe that he will never quit. No. He has the plans to take okay. over all of the okay. crazy shit. Okay. We be playing the game from the bottom of the top, could they collect it all, and I will never stop when I spend all the money to unlock it all just because I can. Yeah, I can do this. And you say, say wanna go far?